Thank you very much. This evening, I am honored to host America's senior military leaders at the White House. I want to thank Secretary Jim Mattis, Chairman Joseph Dunford, terrific people, and other esteemed military leaders for their distinguished service and sacrifice and for ensuring that America's military might remains unchallenged, unquestioned, and unrivaled. And it is that. It is unrivaled, especially with what we've done over the last period of a year. To keep America safe, America's armed forces must remain the most powerful, lethal, and effective fighting force anywhere on Earth. The best way to prevent war is to be certain that no one doubts our capacity to deliver overwhelming force. Overwhelming force means you'll probably never have to use the overwhelming force. Over the past 21 months, we have made historic progress, rebuilding our military, streamlining our defenses, and improving our readiness. We have achieved record funding for the military, record by a lot, $700 billion last year and $716 billion this year. These funds are supporting new fighter jets, ships, tanks, and a modernized nuclear arsenal and the largest pay raise for our troops in nearly 10 years. Our military will soon be more powerful than ever before, by a long shot. We've also greatly increased member contributions to NATO so that other countries are starting to pay much closer to their fair share, or in some cases, even their fair share. And many of them are absolutely amazed that they've been put in that position. But they really have had to do that, and we're grateful to them. Last year, we took in $44 billion more, and this year, it'll be a number even bigger than that. Not from us, but from other countries. We've made significant progress in the fight against radical Islamic terrorism. In Syria and Iraq, our brave warfighters have decimated ISIS. And we are working to get our regional partners to step up their contributions and take greater responsibility for the future of their own region. The United States will continue to deny terrorists any funding, territory, support, or means of infiltrating our country. In this effort, we understand that immigration security is a national security. It's about security as a whole. And that includes our borders that you've been reading so much about over the last long period of time, but especially over the last two weeks. Under my administration, we are also recognizing both cyber and space as critical warfighting domains, just like land, air, and sea. In May, we elevated Cyber Command to a unified combatant command, which is a big step. It tells you we think it's very important, Jared. Right? It's very, very important. We have published the first national cyber strategy in over a decade, and tonight I will hear an update on our progress to create the sixth military branch, the United States Space Force. So that's where it's at. It's going to be a big part of it. In everything we do, we are guided by one sacred goal, to defend — we have to — to defend the safety and sovereignty of our great country and its citizens. Each of you here today has devoted your life to this very important mission. Each of you leads the best, brightest, and bravest in the world, and each of you proudly serves the greatest nation on the face of the Earth. We are doing better as an economy than we've ever done before. Very important for everyone in this room to understand that, because without economic strength, we can't have military strength. And you've known that, and you've seen that, and you've watched that, because our forces have been very seriously depleted over the last number of years, and now they're built up. And they're built up in the proper way, with the best equipment in the world, all made right here in the USA. So I look forward to a productive discussion and to joining you all for dinner. We're going to be having dinner after this. Uh, I think the media will be allowed to go home, finally. You can go home. You had a long day. But we'll be uh, discussing a lot of different things, uh, especially our forces. But we have the finest people, the finest leaders, and the finest equipment anywhere in the world. And uh, it's an honor to have you all. Thank you very much. You're all my friends. Most of you I know very well. Some of you I know just well. 
But I want to thank you all and General, General, great job. Thank, thank, thank you very much. much. Appreciate thank it. Much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. President, last week there was an early season of an attack on uh, the assassination on the top U.S. general in Afghanistan. Are you convinced that you can discuss your strategy for Afghanistan? And are you convinced we have. That yeah, we, we discuss it all the time. We discuss it all the time. We, we feel very badly about that. It's a war. It's a tough business, my right, general. Tough business, you do. <clears throat> Mr. President, you said that you believe that Khashoggi's death was a cover-up. Does that mean you don't believe the Saudi's explanation that it was an accident? No. However, they talked about it. Nothing that they've done has done has done well. It certainly has not been. Spoken of properly, they did the wrong thing. You'd even thinking about the idea. They certainly did a bad job of execution, and they certainly did a bad job of talking about it or covering it up, if you'd like to say that. But I would say it was a total fiasco. From day one, from the thought, whoever put it in their minds, that was not a good thought. The process was no good. The execution was no good. And the cover-up, if you want to call it that, was certainly no good. Mr. President, yes. Have a, uh, Mr. President, will you be discussing a potential military response to Saudi Arabia and or the migrant We discuss caravan? everything in this room. You'll be the last to know. <laughs> what about the migrant caravan? With yeah, it's coming up. We'll discuss that, too, because we're not going to allow these people to come into our country. You know, we have people, millions of people, that have worked for years to come into our country legally. They worked for years. They've gone through all sorts of hell to proudly be a citizen of the United States. And it's taken a long time. And they've worked very hard. Isn't it really unfair when people can just burst right over our borders and now they end up staying in this great country? Now, one of the things that has happened is we're doing so well economically that everybody wants a piece of it. You didn't have that two and three and four years ago or 10 years ago. But everybody wants a piece of it. But you have to come in legally, and you have to come in through merit. We have big companies coming into our country that would never even thought about it three years ago. We have car companies coming in from Japan, brand new plants going to be announced soon. They've already announced some of them. Going to Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Kentucky and North Carolina and South Carolina, coming all over our country, Florida. And they need workers. And we want people. I think everybody around this table wants to see people come in. We need people. We have 3.7 unemployment. It's the lowest number in many years. Overall, probably the lowest numbers as a whole that we've ever had. African-American, lowest numbers in history. Asian-American. Uh, you look at any uh, Hispanic-American. Lowest numbers, best unemployment numbers, and best employment numbers in history. We have more people working today than we've ever had working in the history of the United States. Think of that. So with all of this, what happens is a lot of people want to break into the system. We want people coming in, but they have to be of merit. They have to be merit-based. And we need those people, because all these companies coming in, they need people. We need workers. And we look forward to doing something on that, and we will be doing something on that. Mr. President, Mr. President, what's the timeline for the creation of Space Force? Uh, I'd like to ask uh, General Matters or Joe. Maybe I'd like to ask one of you two or both. How do you how do you feel about it, General? Uh, right now, what we're going to do is set up a combatant command. Uh, that's our initial goal. We're working with Congress uh, for the legislation that we'll need to open the door to uh, further organization. But we're not letting any moss grow. Uh, we're organizing now for combat, and that's combatant command is <coughs> underway right now. Joe, it's your, it's your. Mr. President. I think I can say uh, that everybody in this room feels strongly about Space Force. Everything's necessary, but that's going to be a very important part. It seems to be where it's at and where it's going. Satellites. And I'm not just talking about sending rockets to the moon or sending rockets to Mars. I'm talking about defense and offense. Uh, so much is going to be a part of space. And we all feel very strongly about it. We're pushing it as hard as we can. And I think we have a good chance next year of officially doing our Space Force. It's a very, very big thing. It's a legacy for everybody in this room. Very important part of our military, both offense and 
defense. Yes, go ahead. Mr. President, when you, just to clarify, when you're saying that the Saudis' execution and cover-up of the murder was a fiasco, are you saying they should have executed it or covered no, it up better? No, I'm saying what they, do you mean? Jeff, you didn't hear me. I'm saying they should have never thought about it. Okay. Once they thought about it, everything else went wrong also. Very simple. They should have never thought about it. It should have never been done. But once they thought about it, everything else they did was bad, too. The cover-up was horrible. The execution was horrible. But they should have never been at an execution or a cover-up, because it should have never happened. Is that more clear? Yes, sir. Mr. President, if the Crown Prince is implicated, how do you plan to hold him accountable? Do you think he should lose his money? Well, we'll have to do something, but I, I will say this. Uh, I spoke with the King. I spoke with the Crown Prince yesterday. And he strongly said that he had nothing to do with this. This was at a lower level. We have people right now in Saudi Arabia that are literally just now getting on planes, coming back. We have people, very talented people, in Turkey, dealing with the top people in Turkey. And we're all meeting tomorrow afternoon. Everybody's going to have a lot of information. We've gained a lot of information. <laughs> And we'll know pretty much everything there is to know, I believe. Uh, it's a very sad event for Saudi Arabia. Very, very sad. Very, very terrible. Mr. President, about the border, you said that you want to, you threaten to close the border militarily. What are you thinking about the national Well, Mexico border? is working with us. Uh, there is a movement toward our country. It's going to be a while before they get here. And this group that is around this table will be involved and others will be involved. We cannot let people come into our country illegally. Just can't do it. But can't do it. You don't have borders, you don't have a country. But were you thinking about the National Guard? Or thinking about a lot of things. What would thinking you about mean? Thinking about everything, including the military, not just the National Guard. The military is what I'm thinking about. Okay. We can't have people coming into our country illegally. It's not fair for a lot of reasons. Not fair to the people that are here, not fair to the people that want to come here. The people that have worked so hard to become a citizen of this country, that are waiting online for 10 years, it's not fair to them, not fair to anybody. Okay. What legally could the military do at the border? They can do a lot. They're the military. Right, fellas? They're the military. They can do a lot. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.